All right. So the recording is on. Uh, let's pray, and then we will get started uh, in this class today on keys to supernatural ministry. I know Mangi already prayed for this class in the, <laughs> in the previous lecture, but we're going to pray together again and get started. All right. Who wants to pray? Anyone? Charles. Charles, you want to pray? Go ahead, Charles. Father God, we thank you so much that you are a God that is supernatural. Hmm. And Lord, it takes you to understand the supernatural because you are supernatural. It's like we are talking about you, we are learning about you, and now it's you to teach us. Because you promised us in Isaiah 54, 13, that the children will be taught of the Lord, and greater will be their peace, and in righteousness they will be established. Lord, I pray that you will establish us, that as we learn this, we will be able to understand that supernatural ministry, that supernatural work, that it's you who is teaching us, and we will be able to apply the principles and be able to live by your statutes and apply everything for the glory of your name and the extending of your kingdom on us. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. So today we get into section two of this course. So we just did uh, the last class, we just did an introduction where we established the possibility of each every and every believer walking uh, a life that is supernatural in the last class. So we established that. And now we want to move forward and we want to talk about the keys that God has made available to us, uh, you know, that as we see in scripture, which are important for us when we want to uh, co-labor with God to manifest the supernatural, whether it's for our own personal benefit, our own personal lives, you know, you want God to do something supernatural in your own life, in your own situation, your circumstance, or also when you are ministering to people, when you're trying to help people in their life situations, and, uh, and we need to see the supernatural work of God to take place. What are some of the keys that we uh, need to learn how to operate or exercise in order to see the supernatural work of God. So that's what this section is about. Then after this, we'll talk about personal preparation. So how can I personally position myself to be you know, used by God in the supernatural? And like uh, we mentioned, you know, we are growing in this. You know, we, we haven't reached um, any st state of perfection. Like Paul said, we haven't already attained, but we are journeying into this. So there is there's, there's a constant learning a constant seeking, a constant uh, pressing into um, these things. But we believe that you know, God will bring the church into a place of greater glory because as he's taking the church from glory to glory. God will bring the church to a place where, as the scripture says, it will be a glorious church, meaning a church that is full of the glory of God, uh, uh, manifesting uh, much more of the supernatural than what we are seeing today, right? So I have shared uh, the PDF for this lecture, uh, and we will I'll just share that with you, and then we will uh, begin to go discuss that, go through it. So in talking about the keys, uh, I've listed out these eight keys that we are going to discuss, and um, um, the keys to a supernatural life and ministry, and uh, like we said in the very beginning, uh, it's not that these things are foreign to us. We probably know all these things. But for us to pull it all together and, and, and to understand how they work together is, is, is the challenge for many of us and is what we are attempting to do. I just want to make sure everybody's let in because once I start talking and I'm on the PDF, people get locked out. Just give me a minute. I just want to check again. All right, everybody's in. Okay. 
All right. Because usually when I change my screen, go to the PDF, then what happens is people come, uh, they get locked out, the auto, auto admit doesn't work well. All right, so uh, back on the PDF here. What are the eight keys we're gonna talk about? And we're gonna look at it from a practical perspective, right? So one is we need to understand the realm of the spirit, the spiritual realm. Okay, that's very, very important. Second, uh, we must understand how faith works and you know how do we exercise faith? Uh, the importance of that, the power of the word, the importance of that. Uh, the renewed mind, uh, how does a renewed mind work when it comes to supernatural? You know, we all understand the renewed mind. Uh, we talk about the renewed mind in the context of uh, you know, having uh, our lifestyle changed, that's important. The renewed might in the context of supernatural life and ministry. We need to understand that. That's a very important key. Uh, then number five, we want to talk about uh, the anointing of the spirits. Uh, we all are, are aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, but now how does the anointing work in the context of manifesting the supernatural? Then we must also understand uh, God's presence and glory, how that works. Uh, because there is a secret there that uh, when we are sensitive and learn to flow with the presence and the glory of God, we will see it. Or, or if we miss that, we will miss the expression of the supernatural. And number seven, seventh key is proclamation and action. That there are times God just calls us to proclaim something so that he can do it. And if we hesitate in the proclamation aspect, uh, we're actually, it's like you're putting a stop to what God is wanting to do. Similar to that is the action part. There are times God wants us to act. He says, step out and do something. And if we hesitate in the action part, we are actually putting a block to the supernatural that God wants to manifest. So we will discuss that. And number eight is the persistence part. Uh, which is again another key. Uh, there are times, or many times, things happen instantaneously. But there, there is there. There are times when God just says, "Hey, stay with it." You know, and we see that also in Scripture. And so, the persistence element. Sometimes we miss out on that, and therefore we miss out on experiencing the supernatural. So we want to understand these eight keys. Uh, how the, the and 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 uh, we are not going to be putting together a formula with these eight uh, variables or no you know or whatever we're not put we're not going to arrive at a formula because what we can say is in the, uh, you know God will lead us uh, as we minister but when we are aware of these keys and are, know how to you know engage with God co work co work with God. Uh, in exercising or using these keys, uh, then we will be better able to see the supernatural manifest in our personal lives and also in the ministry, in ministry to others. Okay, so our goal is to really discuss these eight keys and talk about, you know, what you should be aware of when you want to manifest the supernatural. So we're going to start with the very first one, which uh, is very simple, but it's very important. The supernatural is really the spiritual overriding the natural. That's what we refer to as the supernatural, right? So in the natural, things are supposed to happen a certain way. But when the spiritual realm overrides that, when we say, when we say spiritual realm, I'm talking about God and, and the laws he's given to us and um, the work of angels and so on, when they override what, Things, the way things are supposed to happen, then we see, then we have the expression of something unusual, something supernatural. So, as a person who wants to see the supernatural take place, it's very important that we are conscious of the spiritual realm and are also aware of. The reality of the spiritual realm and how the spiritual realm can be made to bear upon the natural. Now, 
there are many believers. I, mean, I would say like, okay, all believers do believe in the spiritual realm. That's why they are believers. They believe in God. Uh, they believe in the Bible. The Bible uh, is talking all about spiritual things. So they do believe. But somehow there is a disconnect, or, or let's say, let me put it like this. Somehow, I'm, I'm speaking about a, a general average Christian believer, right? You ask, do you believe in God? Of course, I believe in God. Do you believe in angels? Of course, I believe in angels. Do you believe uh, that God can work miracles? Of course, I work miracles. Okay, so they agree to that. Uh, so they, in some sense, they do believe in the spiritual realm. But they're not in a position where they are seeing the spiritual realm being able to cause a change in the day-to-day -day things of life. Or not convinced and not that convinced that they can engage in the spiritual in order to bring about a change in the natural. I'm just speaking in general terms. I'm not saying all believers are like that. I'm saying in general. But thank God, more and more believers are moving over to this place where they understand the realm of the spirit. And they understand that, hey, while I am in the natural world, and of course there are things that in the natural world they're supposed to happen a certain way, uh, I can engage with the spiritual realm and co-labor with God and bring about things, changes in the natural realm. The more and more believers are moving that way. And that's the position we're supposed to be. We are supposed to be people who, while we are living in the natural, we're also very aware of the spiritual and we're able to quickly move into the spiritual in order to address a natural situation. Anytime, any day of the week. That's how we're supposed to live. So, uh, I'm just giving examples. Suppose, you know, you, uh, you face a particular situation, maybe in your workplace, maybe in the, you know, in a situation that you're in financially or in a family or something else. Of course, you're aware that it is a situation happening in the natural world. I mean, you're faced with that. But for you, you immediately are able to step into the spiritual and say, how can I address this from that, from the spiritual realm? What does the word of God say? So immediately your response is coming from the spiritual realm over into the natural, rather than just, what can I do in the natural to handle this? Example, uh, somebody comes with bad news, something bad happened. Immediately, you say, hey, Psalm 112 comes to your mind. My heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. I will not be afraid of evil tidings. You know, or Proverbs 3, same thing. So no, they're bringing bad news. But hey, I will, my heart is fixed, trusting in God. I'm not afraid of this. And then you say, well, the Bible says, I who have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, I will reign in life. So I'm going to dominate this situation. And you're immediately moving in the realm of the spirit in order to handle the situation. I'm not saying we deny the natural. You know, yeah, it is a bad news. Something bad has happened or, you know, something very difficult is going on. I'm not denying it. I'm not saying it's illusion or it's not there. I recognize it. I may have some responsibility in the natural, maybe... I need to respond to somebody. Maybe I need to give a phone call to somebody. You know, there's some, those natural responsibilities are there, which we will fulfill. Uh, I, I am not in any way uh, avoiding that. But at the same moment, I know I can operate out of the realm of the spirit to also to address this. And I can, I am confident that while I, uh, while I address it from the spiritual realm, 
I will be able to handle it. So that is the place we have to be in order to see the supernatural. Uh, I'm just going to pause here. I want to look at your faces. Since uh, uh, are you guys with me so far? I mean, you all understanding it, or is it too abstract? You got what I said? Yes, Pastor. Okay. All right. Okay. So we are still okay. trying it to get uh, to that. Yes. Sometimes. Sorry, Charles. I didn't hear you. I was All right. saying okay. so that I see most of you with it is right. coming slowly. It's, right. it's okay. a trickle, yes. Right. <laughs> it's coming slowly. <laughs> okay, Charles, you'll get it. Don't worry. Okay. Ah. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure uh, you're with me. Right. So. This, what we were saying, understanding the realm of the spirit is very important. And it should be something just normal for us, right? Uh, uh, just to borrow a word, we have to be like, we have to be amphibious. That means operating in two realms, right? You know, an amphibian can uh, move in water and on land. So in some way, we are amphibious. We are moving in the natural and the spiritual. It's just easy for us. You know, we are, because we are spiritual beings. Okay. So that's the position we're supposed to be in. That, uh, you know, I am in this natural world, I'm operating, I am engaging, I understand, I am being responsible, I'm doing my part in the natural world, of course. But I'm also in the spiritual. And I am addressing things from the spiritual. So when we are addressing things from the spiritual, what are some things to keep in mind? And I've just put some of these things down. One is we must... Keep in mind the greatness of God. There is nothing impossible with our God. So in handling that matter, we're also looking at it from the spiritual perspective. And from the spiritual perspective, it's always, there is nothing impossible with our God. I mean, we have no other choice. When you're operating from the spiritual, that's how you, can, that's how you see things. You see them the way God sees them because you're co-working with God and we cannot limit God. It's, there is nothing impossible with God. So when you're operating from the spiritual, you're a co-worker with God and no matter what limitation there is in the natural, which we are very aware, we say, God, there's nothing impossible with you. You can do this. So when you know when you receive a call, a phone call, somebody on the other end, uh, they're describing their problem. It could be a financial problem. It could be a, a sickness issue. It could be some other circumstance, or whatever you know. Pe people face. They called you. Now, in the natural, you're listening to their problem. You're not denying the problem. Yeah, this is real, and sometimes it can be very complicated. Uh, and sometimes in the natural, there may not be anything we can do. And you're, we, are, we are aware of that. We're not denying that. But you're saying, okay, I'm going to pray. But how am I going to pray? When you're praying, you're going to be operating out of the Spirit. And the only option you have is, there's nothing impossible with God. So I'm going to pray according to God's ability. And that's when you say, God, I know the situation looks bad. I, I know all of this is in the natural, but in the spiritual, there's nothing impossible with you. Nothing is impossible with God. So that's how we're going to approach it. 
when we approach it from the spiritual realm. The second thing we must keep in mind when we are approaching that situation, whatever that need is, from the spiritual realm, is that there are laws in the spiritual realm that God has given to us or made available to us, which we must engage. So why are laws given? To help us engage the realm. So example, if you look at it in the natural, uh, there are so many things in the natural world, like there, there's the law of gravity. It's there. We are aware it's there. But we must put it to good use. There are other laws, the laws of aerodynamics. Um, there's, there's so many, so many fields. Uh, th these are things that are repeatable. They are there, but they're intended so that we could use it. In the same way, in the spiritual world, God has said, look, I want you to understand certain things. And, and that's what many of the other keys are, that I learn to operate these laws with confidence. For instance, you say, Father, I thank you. I have a covenant covenant with you. So when you say, God, I have a covenant with you, you are engaging a spiritual law, the law of covenant. It is so unbreakable. God said, I will not alter my covenant. I will not break my covenant. I will not alter the things that has gone out of my lips. You know that on the other side of the covenant is an immutable God, an unchangeable God. This is covenant. It's a law. It, it cannot fail. But you need to know that when you are operating out of the spiritual realm. So God, I'm coming to you on the basis of my covenant with you the covenant you gave me through your son, Jesus. So that enables you to operate with utmost confidence. Now, if we don't know our covenant and we are not confident about the spiritual law of the, the law of covenant, that this is, this is established in the spiritual world, we will be shaky in our approach in the spiritual realm. You know, say, so, oh God, I mean, yes, we are praying, but oh God, you know, help the person if if not this you know so we have to be aware of spiritual laws and uh, how we can operate those with confidence when you say father i thank you for the blood of jesus christ that is law the blood of jesus is absolute it's powerful so we have absolute confidence in that. Right? When you're praying for somebody, ministering to somebody. Right? So our responsibility is to understand these spiritual laws and be absolutely confident when you're operating out of those spiritual laws. Right? Now, uh, uh, I don't know if I put the right verse down. It's Psalm 103. Sorry. Suddenly, I have a doubt in this thing. <laughs> Psalm 103. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 103, verse 7. Uh, it says that God made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. Uh, that's, that's interesting. So God made known his ways to Moses and his acts, his works to the people of Israel. So there's a connection between the ways of God and the works of God. Moses had to understand the ways of God so that he could be a co-worker with God and see the works of God released and the people experience the works of God. 
Right? The people saw water come out of a rock. The people saw the Red Sea part. The people saw quails fall from heaven. Uh, the people saw manna come. Uh, the people experienced the works of God. But there was somebody who was a co-worker with God who was understanding the ways of God. Moses, the man of God. So, of course, we want to see the works of God. But you need to understand the ways of God. People come to us, they want to, they want the works of God. Now, of course, it's a great thing if you're able to teach them the ways of God so that they can have it for themselves and they can operate it for themselves and they can be a blessing to others. And that's that's wonderful. But we need to understand the ways of God so that we can see the works of God released. And that's understanding the laws of the spiritual, understanding how to co-work with God. What has he already told us? You know, he said, Look, I've already revealed these things to you. I want you to operate them. Okay, so that's part of understanding the realm of the spirit. That when we are going to uh, address situations, okay, how do I bring the spiritual realm to bear upon this? Right? And then we must also understand the spiritual dynamics. So there are laws, and then there is also. God has taught me his ways. You know, uh, we will talk about each of these uh, in depth. But there are things that God has said you do that can, which you do in the natural, which you exercise as a person, and this will cause the spiritual realm to affect the natural realm. So he's given to us. So it could be the exercise of faith. It could be the power of those spoken words. It could be praise, worship, obedience, uh, you know, sowing, anything. You know, there are things that God has given to us. He says, look, I've revealed these things to you. I've revealed my ways to you. Uh, and these are, I've revealed things that you can do, which will trigger the spiritual to affect the natural. And there is no formula. So it's not like, you know, say this three times, sing two songs, and, uh, uh, you know, um, give a hundred rupees. It's not like formula like that. So we can't, we don't present a formula to every person. But what we can do is, at that moment, as we are led by the Holy Spirit, we know that I can exercise these things, certain things. I'm not, we don't have to do from A to Z, but certain things. Sometimes it's just an exercise of faith. Sometimes it's a spoken word. Sometimes you engage in a in praise or worship. Sometimes it's uh, you know a doing an a taking a step of righteousness and that you know uh, doing a, 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 a righteous act. Sometimes it is uh, you know sowing and reaping. But there are different things. And so we exercise those things that God has given to us in order to cause the spiritual to bear upon the natural. So that's the third thing we must be aware of when we are saying we might understand the realm of the spirit, spiritual realm. Because really, it is the spiritual realm acting upon the natural that causes the supernatural to take place. And lastly, in engaging with the spiritual to work upon the natural, we must understand the role of angels and demons. Because in the natural, there are things that are spoken to us, uh, but we must be aware that there could be beyond something more than what is just spoken to us in the natural. You know, somebody describes a problem, this is happening, this is happening, okay. But what if there are some demonic in, demonic influence happening that needs to be addressed? What if uh, there are, you know, demonic powers that need to be dealt with in order to see the supernatural happen in that person's life or that family or so on. What if we need to, you know, cause angels to go forth and uh, and uh, uh, 
you know, uh, for things to happen based uh, on, on angel, angelic intervention, right? So we need to understand that. We need to understand, you know, what, what can I do to cause angels to come to bear on the situation? Okay, so that's the fourth aspect of understanding the spiritual realm in order to affect change. So sometimes, when you're ministering to somebody, you take authority over demonic spirits. You confront demonic powers in the name of Jesus. And you have to do it because the problem is not just what they are describing in the natural, oh, this is happening, this is happening, but there are demonic powers behind it that have to be addressed. So you take authority. You rebuke those powers. Or you may teach that person saying, hey, I want, please do this in order to resist demonic interference in your life in that situation. And then you also know that God has sent angels to be ministering spirits, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. So you know that angels have been sent to assist us as God's people. So you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, release your angels to intervene in the situation, whatever, you know, divine protection or to cause, um, you know, the supply of God to come in or whatever thing has to happen. Lord, release your angels. And then we also know that angels uh, uh, take heed to the voice of his word. So this this here has to be verse 20, not verse 7. Sorry about that. Psalm 103, or verse 20, right? The Bible says here that uh, the angels, they, they heed the voice of his word. So that's another reason why we release the word of God in a situation. Because angels respond to the voice of God's word. So God has given us the privilege of speaking his word. And so angels, we believe angels will respond to that. Right? So you say, God, I release your word. I declare what your word says over the situation, over the individual. And you know that angels will respond to the voice of God's word and get involved in that situation. So while there are demonic spirits operating, we know that are angels will work on our behalf. So we believe in angels. And we expect God to release his angels to assist us as we uh, minister the supernatural. Okay, so this is the first key that uh, I just presented to us here as we get ready to minister the supernatural, that we are convinced about the realm of the spirit. We're convinced that from the spiritual realm, we can effect change in the natural. And as we operate out of that spiritual realm, these are things we're keeping in mind. First, nothing is impossible with God. If God is going to do something in this situation, nothing is impossible. And that's the whole purpose of us engaging in the realm of the Spirit, so that God will intervene. Then, we understand the ways of God. He's given us certain laws on which we operate. His word, his covenant, his blood. We operate out of that. Third, there are things he's taught us to do, which when we do it, it'll cause God to work in the situation. So we are taking responsibility. We are acting on the knowledge he's given to us. We're acting as the Holy Spirit tells us, you know, hey, do this. This needs to be done. So that's a spiritual dynamic we are, we are acting on. We are moving in in order to give God the opportunity to work. And lastly, we are aware that in that situation there could be other interference, demonic. So we confront demonic powers that need to be confronted. And we cause the release of angels. Now, 
just some examples, right? So, and I, I, I'm not saying this that uh, um, to, you know, just demean anyone else, but, you know, one Sunday um, after we, um, uh, you know, after our service, usually we have this Zoom prayer. And uh, so, uh, so this happened sometime the latter, towards the end of last year. Uh, I think it was November of last year. So this person, uh, this lady came on the Zoom call. Oh, well, actually, it was. Uh, uh, the Zoom call, sorry, Zoom call was a second, different second occurrence. Uh, I need to go back. This this was a phone call. Um, this person had sent an email, please pray, and so she wanted to call. So I called on the phone, and on the phone she said, you know, the situation that she and her husband, her family were going on for so a long time, and um, so many people had come and prayed and all that. So again, I'm not discrediting anybody who prayed. I don't even know who all, but she mentioned so many, she had called, reached out to so many people, this and that, and nothing had happened. And uh, so now she was trying APC. <laughs> she had heard about APC through somebody else. And so she sent the email, can I pray? I said, okay. Now, I may have prayed just five minutes, or maybe even less than that, on the phone with her over the situation. But one thing I did, and I remember that, was I went very strong against demonic interference over her, over her husband who was going through some physical problems um, and uh, had some physical conditions. Very strong, but I dealt with demonic powers. And this is a testimony. She herself came back and said, the day we prayed, from that day, there was an immediate change. Her husband physically, you know, he, uh, his hands were all uh, twisted and whatever, there's different things, problems in his body. It all left. And uh, things were changed. She said, it's like almost night and day in her house. And so she called back, I think she said, okay, so I want to know what was it that you did? It did not happen with all the other people who came to our house and prayed for us. What happened here? What did you do? Right. So all I remember was I confronted demonic powers over the phone call when praying with her for less than five minutes. But the change was so dramatic, which she testified to. And then from then on, she became very serious in her walk of faith. And then uh, I remember the second time was earlier this year. Yeah, when uh, she came on the Zoom call and uh, her husband had physically was okay, but he had some other problems, so that was affecting their home. And again, this was very dramatic because she came on the Zoom call, I pray. That evening, that evening, that same Sunday evening, the husband did something so unusual. He called the wife and the children, made them sit down and read the Bible and started prayer in the house. So again, it was very dramatic change. And she was, she testified. She said, this is very dramatic. But again, in the second time, the second time, that is a Zoom call, I felt more of a prophetic, the release of a prophetic word. So the first time it was confronting demonic powers. The second time when she prayed, it was a release of a prophetic word. I said, this will happen today. I'm commanding and decreeing it will happen in your house today. And I used the word today. 
because now I, I rarely use that. I can't, you know, you don't set a time for when God to work. But sometimes when there's a, a prophetic anointing and you release the word, you release a time sometimes. I'm not saying all the, every time you do it, but that, but I remember that when I prayed with on the phone, I said, today this will happen in your house. And that evening, uh, this happened a couple of months back uh, on a Zoom call, the same lady. That evening, her husband called over and she was shocked. So, I'm just giving an example where it's the same lady, same family. First time there was a need for physical deliverance. Second time there was a need for some, you know, family relational issues, those kinds of things. In both cases, we are causing the spiritual to bear upon the natural, but the approach is different. One, we dealt with demonic spirits and there was immediate release. Second, there was a release of a prophetic word and anointing that caused about a change. So, uh, we need to understand spiritual realm, the spiritual realm in order to bear upon people's lives. Now, I wish everything, every ministry occasion was as simple as this. It is not. Uh, there are some challenges, the situations are difficult and, you know, we don't always see, uh, you know, dramatic changes and all that. So, uh, I don't want to make it seem like every situation is like this no but there are these situations and we thank god for it and we also need to learn in other situations how do we work how do we engage these things as we operate out of the realm of the spirit okay so let's take some questions on this uh, and we will continue this next week uh Shri kumar has a question can a christian make a vow with god hmm. And now, as far as Jesus taught us, he taught us not to do that, right? So the Old Testament, people did. You know, people made vows and they kept it and so on. But Jesus came and said, let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Don't swear by what's in heaven or what's on earth. Um, this is in Matthew. I think it's Matthew. Five uh, verses uh, thirty-three to thirty-seven, Matthew five thirty-three to thirty-seven. So this is what Jesus taught us, right? He said, uh, "Don't swear," and uh, uh, and you know, perform your oaths to the Lord, but don't even do that because. Uh, if you make a commitment to God, yeah, you keep your commitment. But don't swear. And uh, what we need to understand is, rather than us operating on the basis of oaths, yeah, or making these kinds of promises, we need to operate on the basis of the finished work of Christ on the cross and the word of God. So uh, my answer is, you know, and I, now some people do it. I'm not saying that there are some people who say, God, no, no, I, um, I promise to do this or God, if you bless me, I will do this. And, you know, that's between them and God. And I'm not criticizing or condemning that, but do you know what Jesus taught us? Matthew 5, 33 to 37. And uh, I would say it's better for us to just operate on what Christ has finished for us rather than uh, us trying to, you know, barter with God. And a commitment that you make, you make it between you in your heart. And as an example, if you're committing to, you know, fasting a certain day of the month or a certain day, uh, a certain day of the week and or doing, giving a certain amount of money or doing a certain kind of thing. Just, just make a commitment in your heart that you're going to do it. And with the help of God, do it. But let's not 
trade with God, you know, saying, God, I do this so that you will do this for me. I think that part is already taken care of the cross. God has already freely given to us everything. So we don't receive it based on oaths. We receive it based on what Christ provided. Is that okay, Sri Kumar? Hope I answered your question. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Um, next question is from Christopher. Please provide Bible references for the spiritual laws. Is there an APC book that provides these details? Hmm. Um, uh, uh, there is... Uh, so. The second part of the question is easy. Uh, there is no, we haven't written a book uh, that details the laws. But for example, we could say, you know, look at Genesis 8, verse 22. Uh, just giving an example, right? So in Genesis 8, 22, the Lord God says, uh, let me just read it rather than quoting it, Genesis 8. He says, um, why, I'm just giving one example. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Okay, just one example. That means God says, look, seed time and harvest is going to be here. So it's a law. Now we can take advantage of that. That means if you want to harvest, you have your seed time. Or, this isn't the natural, of course, Genesis 8, 22 is a natural, but a parallel, parallel scripture is in Galatians 6, right? So Galatians 6, let me give you the exact verse. It says here, um, Galatians 6 verses 7 and 8, this example of a law, right? So Genesis 8.22, seed time and harvest. It's a law. Natural. Spiritual. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. You sow to the flesh, corruption. To sow to the spirit, everlasting life. Spiritual. Sowing, reaping. But as long as the earth remains, sowing and reaping will not cease. There is a natural side to it. There is a spiritual side to it. So what do we do? We uh, engage the law. We take advantage of the law. Okay. Is that okay, Christopher? Just a quick answer to your question. Okay. Okay. Um, Uh, Christopher, we can't hear you. Uh, Christopher, sorry, we can't hear you, Christopher. Okay. Um, sorry, Christopher, I, I, I didn't hear you, uh, but let let me just quickly uh, answer the other questions. Um, let's say, Radima, you have your hand up. Uh, your question, please. Yes, Pastor. Uh, so as believers, when we keep pursuing the supernatural, um, how can we uh, you know, respond to, or rather, how should we look at God's sovereignty and uh, also man's free will? Uh, to give an analogy, now we know the word uh, word of god says you know our uh, struggles are not our uh, fight is not against flesh and blood and uh, we also just uh, learned about uh, uh, the spiritual realm that you spoke about and in the beginning also when you told that when we face a situation and this is how we approach of course there's no rule and law uh, for example we face a situation i face a situation and as a believer i start claiming god's verses uh, but then in that situation even though it might be a physical situation and I do understand there's also things happening in the spiritual realm, but most times there are people also involved either in the situation or whatever happens uh, by the end of the battle. 
uh, might impact other people in my life or around me uh, regardless of they are in that situation or not uh, so here's the thing uh, we believe in god's power we believe in the supernatural and many a times we even witness the supernatural uh, but then there are times we see i'm not reasoning out uh, but uh, i'm just trying to understand that god is sovereign and he is an all powerful god but then there are also people involved and uh, god even in god's sovereignty uh, there's also this free will that god has given to man and uh, you know with other people he will not uh, god's laws and his ways are also unchanging right so he will not uh, intervene where free will is involved so you are trying to understand how do we approach that mm. while pursuing the supernatural i hope my question is clear with the yeah. analogy given mm. so yeah so that's just a uh, 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 an important thing that is we cannot override uh, an, an individual um, the, the free will of you know people but we can deal with the forces that are affecting them right so what should be our approach one where possible we see if we can get the cooperation of people you know if possible now it may not have may not be possible in every situation but uh, especially when we are pursuing uh, we want to see a supernatural work uh, if possible try to get their cooperation right so uh, try to get their will also aligned to hey we are going to pursue this together sometimes we may have to deal with the demonic forces that are influencing them you know maybe you know in situations like that so we deal with that in the spiritual but if people are choosing not to that's where you know neither god nor us can force the supernatural to take place you know and now god uh, because he's sovereign may choose to do something but that's completely in the hands of god but following normal spiritual laws we can't force god to do it neither can we force something to happen when uh, people are choosing not to you know come in alignment with the ways of god so the first thing we do we would do is try to deal with any hindrance that's keeping them from coming into alignment you know so if it's a demonic influence that preventing somebody from aligning to the thing you deal with that first in spiritual then we invite them say hey, can we can we pray together can we are you open to doing this you know uh, so when you get them into alignment it's 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 much better but if they're refusing it then we can't force the supernatural we say god you know just in your mercy god intervene in your grace intervene that means we're saying god only if you do something in spite of their choice something will happen but under the normal laws we can't force it in their lives so in those situations we just pray for the release of god's mercy say god in your mercy deal with this because uh the normal law of faith and um and it's it's, it's not uh, going to work there are times when even in those situations uh you know when we listen to god god will say and just declare decree this so the that means you're joining with the sovereign of god causing something to take place where god is doing something to show that person you know a work but then that's where we become sensitive to the anointing to say that if god wants to do it if he doesn't want if there's nothing god is moving us to do then we can't force it is that okay i hope i answered your question redeem okay yeah yes pastor i was just i mean it's just a thing that we all face in our battles but uh, i was just trying to understand how do we look at uh, the sovereignty or yeah is there some some other side to it but that mm. makes sense and also 
when we know god is for us and not against us we can keep pursuing the supernatural i believe yeah, yeah. thank you pastor okay all right thank you let me try to quickly answer um uh all right sravan chinu has two questions um uh question is um for every problem we face and we pray do we deal with demonic spirits for every situation so uh the answer is no you know we don't have to um you know we don't say that every problem is demonic and that's where we need to pay attention to what the holy spirit is saying you know uh, and and the holy spirit is saying look deal with the demonic you deal with it right but we, we don't say every problem is demonic right uh, we we need to be aware to the spirit and your second question is do we is do we create a new problem which doesn't belong to us by placing ourselves in the wrong place uh usually when we step out of place or when we step out of time with god uh, yeah we do cause some problems uh but um, you know when we realize that maybe we stepped out of place or maybe we stepped out of time with god uh, the simple thing to do is just to get back into alignment right and god is big god is wonderful he will restore he will uh, get things back in line so to answer your question yes in most cases when people step out of place or out of time problems are created but uh, we can always get back into uh, you know uh, into alignment okay um uh um all right okay we're going to pray for beth we all just going to it's wonderful that we are all together in class mm-hmm. and we're going to pray with beth uh, for a sister for a person who is uh, under demonic influence and uh, and uh, we need to ask god to intervene so we're going to do that okay on as we pray together i know uh, we are past time but let's just take a few minutes to pray with beth and i see christopher's question uh um chris maybe we'll take it up again next week but uh, you know i just point us to the the parables of jesus because in the parables jesus is unveiling to us the secrets the principles of the kingdom and uh, that's a great place to learn you know the spiritual laws of the kingdom okay uh let's pray together and we'll pick it up chris so if you if you want to bring it up the next week we'll do it uh, let's pray together for beth uh the the person that beth has mentioned um uh, a sister who is under demonic influence and uh we will we will just pray over her so everyone all of us wherever we are f- from just join in prayer for this person father we join in prayer for this person that beth has mentioned in the name of the lord jesus christ we take authority over the situation in the name of jesus we come against every demonic influence and we command you satan to stop your work over her mind over her body over her family in the name of jesus i command every evil work to stop I break off every affliction of of her mind and body in the name of Jesus. I release her in Jesus name. May every influence every affliction. And Father let there be peace in this household. Let the kingdom of God that brings righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost be released upon this household. Let the kingdom of God be established over them in their midst in Jesus name amen amen all right everyone thank you for giving uh, extra time amen. to this class today sorry to keep you late um enjoy the rest of the day uh, see you again soon god bless bye each one thank you pastor God bless you God bless God bless each one